Hi everyone, Jakesoft here, and today it's everyone's favorite time, it's demo time. Okay, so we've been working hard on the Infinity uh, operating system, uh, we're calling it Xstream, um, it's the next generation stream, uh, it's based on my stream architecture, um, with heavy, heavy modifications. I've got my Sabre plugged into my computer down there uh, via USB, and we're going to kick off uh, the GUI, and there's the GUI. And just like with uh, the old school 8-bit stream, you choose your COM port and connect. Easy as that. Okay, and it'll reboot. All right, so here's our new UI screen. Pretty simple right now. You've got your sound bank selection over here. You've got reloading default settings, saving to saver, and exiting. And these are the main ones that you're going to want to push to change anything is the uh, profile editor and the option screen. So the option screen is uh, just a bunch of, uh, you know, a handful of options that you can change. Um, and you can turn on and off one button blaster block, uh, turn on and off one button lockup. Uh, you, can, you can use the font boot sounds or you can use, uh, you know, the global boot sound. Here's your current sound volume, um, you know, just a handful of stuff. I won't read them all. Um, just stuff you can change. And any changes made here apply to our, our global changes that apply to all fonts, uh, regardless of what one you're playing. Now, the more interesting stuff all happens in here in the uh, profile editor. So you can choose your blade profile. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute. You can choose your clash sensitivity. This is um, some presets uh, that seem to work pretty well. I got one through nine. And um, I'll skip this for a second. Um, and then there's a swing sensitivity, which is the same kind of thing. You've got nine presets you can choose from to change uh, your swing sensitivity. Um, this Omni Swing, um, we have uh, developed uh, a bunch of different algorithms for handling dynamic swings and we couldn't decide which one we liked best so we just said eh, we'll leave it up to you let the user pick um, this will also open up uh, when we we'll document you know how each one works um, that'll open it up to sound font artists to, to choose uh, you know what ones they would like to use best um, what ones they recommend for their fonts but there's nothing to stop you from uh, using any of these and they all sound slightly different um, Three is my preference. Uh, that seems to work the best with most of the fonts that I have. Um, but, you know, any of these are, are possible. And the classic one uh, just basically means no dynamic swing. Do it the old school way uh, with, you know, pre-recorded swing sounds and no dynamic swings. Okay, so let's go into the Blade Profile Editor. Um, before you go in there, you can see what this looks like. So if you push the button, it turns on the saber, and you can uh, kind of see what that blade profile looks like with a power up and a power down. A little 10 second preview. So if we change that to something else, see now it's blue. Get a little bit of a shimmer there. And try this one. So you got an orange. And there's some presets that come um, with the firmware by default. But we are going to go in and edit one of them. Let's uh, let's choose one I haven't really messed with. Okay. So let's modify that. Now, the way the new, the blade architecture is completely new um, from the ground up. Um, so every blade profile consists of a collection of effects and you can change uh, what effect you're using for each event. And you can also with these modify buttons change uh, the parameters of those effects. So a little more complicated than stream, but it's not too hard. Uh, I'll walk you through it. So. For example, the power-up style, I've got kind of a fade-on 
uh, effect right now that you saw that's that's a good default for this is an RGB and hilt LED saber so that that's a pretty good default uh, setting for those but there will be others for uh, NeoPixel sabers obviously you have more variety there and uh, there's also there's an instant on effect uh, and the scroll on effect doesn't really do anything for RGB LED um, but that that would be like the default for uh, a NeoPixel string blade so in order to view any of this stuff, you're going to want to use this preview button. Now on this screen, the preview button opens up this little remote control. And this little remote control allows you to turn things on and test out your effects. Here's your lockup. Okay, that's what the lockup looks like for that blade file profile. Blasters. And clashes. Okay. So the effects will take effect um, after you hit the apply button, and I will walk you through that. So if we hit um, uh, instant on, then hit apply. Okay, that just sent that's those settings down to the saber. So now if we turn it on, see it instantly turns on. There's no scroll. There's no uh, there's no fade on. See. And if we turn it back to a fade on, you'll see it fades on more slowly. Okay, so if we turn them both to um, instant on and then instant off, it would be it would be like a, it would turn on and off like a stunt saber. So hit apply, instant on, instant off. Okay. So these are some basic effects. Um, obviously, we're still uh, adding different effects. This this list will get longer as we add more, but you can pick any of them at any time um, as we add more. Okay, so I'm going to put this back to fade on, fade off, because that just looks better. Now, you can change the colors associated with any of these by using the color tune option. These checkboxes over here allow you to set the color to be the same for several different effects at so you don't have to do them independ independently so if you hit normally you'd want your power up your power down and your and your main flicker to all be the same primary color you would assume so you go into color tune there are three colors that can be associated with each effect not all colors are used for all effects they're just there for flexibility creativity uh, for future collaborators um, when we want to do more effects. So almost all of them are going to use this primary color first. Um, so if we this this for basic RGB effects they're pretty much mostly this color sometimes too uh, and I'll demonstrate that uh, a little bit in a minute. So if we want to turn it on you see that's our color for right now. If we want to change this to be just I think it's red green blue so I think that's blue let's make it red hit apply turn on okay there we go see the other colors are the same okay so if we liked that hit okay and it'll save that. The flicker style, if we wanted to change that, um, it's random shimmer right now. A random color swap um, is another option, and solid on is another. So if we hit apply, turn it on, see the shimmer went away? No more shimmer. Turn on the random shimmer, hit apply, turn it on. See it's shimmering a little bit there. Okay, so now once you've got your colors set the way you want to, you can modify each of these effects individually to tune their parameters. Now I'm going to have to put together a, a guide um, to describe how this works a little bit more, but I'll just give you the high level right now. Um, let's go in and modify our lockup style. So right now we can see our lockup is set to solid on. If I activate the lockup, 
it just stays that color for as long as the lockup lasts. If we want to change that to random color swap, we can go in and modify the colors for this. Now you see this is this is the color that it is right now for the prime, when it was solid on. This second color is black because all the channels are turned off. So if we want to see what that looks like, hit apply, turn it off first, turn it back on, then activate the lockup. See how it's it's randomly going to dark. Okay. Now obviously that's not that's not what we want to do. So if we go into okay, so we're going to want to change our colors for the lockup style. So we'll do color tune. We'll change this. Uh, let's say we want it to alternate between red. Let's just make this a little bit more red. And uh, like maybe white. All right, there. Hit apply on that. Turn it on. Activate the lockup. Okay. Now you notice it's not. It's mostly staying that secondary color. You can tune that too. Back out of this, go into modify the effects. So this special parameter has to do with the probability that it will be either color. Set that to 50, apply, turn on, lock up. See, so now it's randomly shimmering in between the two. Now, I had to come up with a way to generically specify parameters um, for effects without really knowing, you know, I had to leave the door open so for, you know, future ideas. So all these uh, parameters, not all parameters are used by all effects, and there will be a guide to tell you when you're tuning your effects which ones uh, are used and which ones are ignored and what the meanings of them are. Um, so this is again work in progress, uh, proof of concept kind of stuff. These, like for example, these frame index start and frame index end uh, parameters. These will be used for uh, pixel blade effects that only go to part of the blade. Um, you can use this to tune um, those effects to only apply to part of the blade. Uh, but obviously, for an RGB LED, uh, you you don't have that that option. Oh, and I should also say. When you're in the screen, you can manually set the color channels here as well if you want to. It's just not as nice as doing it on the color set screen because uh, you have to type in uh, your your values verbatim. So if, for example, I wanted to make that not white, I can make that a zero, apply it, turn it on, lock up. Now it's kind of more blue. See? So I'll put that back. Okay. Okay, so now we've got our effects set up and we can change the colors, you know, and the colors for any of the effects uh, and the parameters for any of the effects uh, here. Okay. When we're all done playing, we can save it to the saber and always remember to save it to the saver before you switch sound fonts um, because it will only load one font at a time. Okay, it went down. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but the profile ID sound plays after you upload to acknowledge that it was successful. And I'm going to put my microphone uh, closer to the saber so you can kind of hear better what's going on when I push some of these buttons.
Okay, so that was a little preview of how that sounds. So when you're all done, just hit the exit button. That will cause the Sabre to reboot and your new settings will take effect. There's rebooting. Okay, it's ready to go. Now another feature I wanted to talk about is you'll notice the uh, this is the UI for the Saber and it looks kind of similar to my uh, my previous gen stream platform but so this is the UI but also so is this and this there's a feature uh, for this new UI that allows you to customize the background and the colors of the text. Uh, so each one of the screens, when you log in, you have the ability to change what the background image is so that you can customize it to your liking. Um, so you can imagine if you are uh, a Saber manufacturer, uh, or Saber Smith, and you want to put your company logo as the background, you can do that uh, to, to try and you know advertise your business. Um, you can use that in demos online uh, and in packages that you give out to your customers. Uh, so that's a neat little customization feature. So everything works exactly the same. It's just uh, just looks different. So you can see on this one, all the colors for the text and everything were the same. But, uh, you know, the highlights here, all these icons and stuff are updatable also. So you see this one is similar to the one that I showed you in the earlier part of this video. All the highlight colors and everything are the same. But if I get out of that, let the Saber reboot. We'll connect in this new one. This is the... the this is the brighter car. Uh, this is the brighter uh, light theme. So, in this theme, you can see I inverted all the colors for the icons. So, you can make these icons uh, pictures anything you'd like. Um, there's a there's a spec that'll release. They just have to be the correct size, um, or you know, otherwise they won't look right. But uh, you can change what this looks like. So you could have, you can imagine, you can get really creative. Uh, if you're an artist, or a graphic artist, or you know, someone that likes to, someone that can draw and you can take pictures and you could put a picture of your actual saber, which is what I had uh, in that other theme. Uh, so this personal theme that I made for myself, this is a picture of the actual saber that I have plugged in down there uh, on the bottom left of the screen. So you could have a picture of your actual saber here uh, if you wanted to, or you know, if you're a saber smith, you could provide a uh, a picture that's the right dimensions uh, for your customers, uh, and they can have a picture of their actual saber as their background. So I figured if you can pick the background for your Windows desktop and you can pick the background for your phone, why not be able to pick the background for your saber UI? Installation is extremely simple, just as it was with the stream. If you want to uh, go to the GitHub site when it goes live, you'll be able to download a zip file. And when you unload the zip file, you'll get a folder that looks like this. Now I have a bunch of installs here so that I could show you the profiles. Um, but they're all identical other than the profile that they're using. So you can go into this uh, folder and just double click on that jar file. And if your uh, Infinity Board has not been programmed yet, you can choose Install Firmware after you choose the port. Hit Install Firmware. Okay, and then you select what variant you want. Right now we've got a Pixel variant and an RGB variant. Um, if we start to support different hardware platforms and things, obviously this list can grow. 
Uh, but I have an RGB saber, so I'm going to choose that. Then I'm going to hit install. Okay, so it's uploading the code right now. Okay, and so it's done. This will time out in a minute. Okay, so we're back to the home screen. Now that your firmware is updated, you can hit connect. Every time you access the COM port, it reboots the microcontroller. All right, so now we're in and you're ready to go. That should be all you have to do. Um, what I'm going for, uh, the, one of the design philosophies I'm going for with Xtreme um, is I don't want you bouncing around the internet, downloading a bunch of stuff. Um, I don't want you to have to go all over the place. I want you to go to one place. That'll be the GitHub site um, that I'll have for this. Um, you, everything you'll need will be available in one download package. I don't want, um, I don't want it to be a requirement for you to ever uh, edit code. Um, my my take is that this set of people that would like to have a lightsaber, um, that would like to leverage the power of open source platforms, is bigger than the set of people that are willing to learn how to code. Um, it's obviously a great skill. Um, I encourage anyone who's interested to learn it, uh, to learn it. But I also acknowledge that it's not for everybody. Um, so I try to make this as easy for you as possible so that you can enjoy the platform. Um, you will never be asked to download an IDE. You will never be asked to uh, edit code in order to use the Xtreme platform. So this folder uh, shows what will actually be in the package when you extract it. There'll be this distro folder. So you go in here and this is you know the folder like I was showing you previously. Um, there's the jar file. Um, you just double click on that that should be the only thing you ever have to do. Um, you can make a shortcut to it on your desktop. Um, there is this uh, debug option, um, so you can run it you know, with a debug window here if you'd like to. Right? Uh, if you're having problems, um, you, you, that gives you a little bit more information. Like if you're posting on the forums with questions, sometimes it's useful uh, to see the error messages that come out here. But most of the time, you shouldn't even need to do that. Um, you know, in, the, in the happy path use case, you should never have to go in there either. All right, so here's the fun part where we get to try out our settings. It's a red blade that we picked. The dynamic swings. Flashes. Got your one button blaster block. If you push the uh, main button once, it goes into blaster block mode. Push it again, comes out of blaster block mode, it's back to regular swinging. And of course, you've got your uh, aux button. So if you hit the aux button and hold it, you get lock up. There's the lockup settings that we picked. And if you single push the aux button, you get a single blaster. So this is designed uh, just like the previous gen stream. It can work with a uh, you know a two button setup or a one button setup. Oh, and of course, uh, I forgot the one button uh, lockup. If you hold the uh, activation button and hit it, okay, it'll stay until you push it again. Okay, so multi font support, of course. We're going to switch fonts here. Saber was Luke's. So we got another uh, dynamic swing font here. All right. 
right, so I'll show you the uh, menu system over here. Um, all you do is, uh, if you've seen any of my other videos and you've used my previous generation uh, stream platform, uh, you're going to see a lot of this is very familiar. Um, I basically think of this as stream with dynamic swings. Uh, that's really oversimplifying it, but uh, uh, the user experience is supposed to be very similar. I tried to make it very similar. So hold in the main button. Menu mode. Set sound volume. Okay, and here you can set the sound volume to one of ten possible presets. Eight, nine, maximum volume. Okay, so it gets, if it gets to the maximum volume that's setting uh, ten, it'll loop around. One. See, and you can go back. Maximum volume. One. Maximum volume. Okay, so again, it's designed so that you don't have to do anything special to do a uh, one button operation. You can just choose to not wire the aux button and uh, you can use all the features. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, when you're done, press and hold the main button. Set clash sensitivity. So clash sensitivity, again, very similar uh, to my previous gen. Ten possible presets. Nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I usually leave it kind of high because when I'm testing uh, on my desk, I don't really want to have to hit it very hard. Set swing sensitivity. So the swing sensitivity um, applies to... Uh, your blaster blocks and um, your non-dynamic swing fonts um, so it, you know the old school fonts with pre-recorded sounds uh, it, it works for that two three four five six seven six five four three two set main blade color all right so here um, it, the menu sound says color but you're really selecting the whole style that you set up in the GUI um, I just need to update that menu sound. So you can hit the uh, main button to scroll forward, or the aux button to scroll backwards. Um, if you go all the way to the end of your presets, it will loop around. So now if you power it up, see, so now it's using the, the green preset. And again, all these presets, you can change all of them in the GUI. You can change all the colors, uh, the flicker patterns, um, all the different effects. You can change all of that in the GUI. to show you is um, the font compatibility is you can use uh, you know profi style uh, smooth swing fonts uh, it'll handle those and you can also do um, and you can also do uh, NEC uh, style fonts too because those are actually pretty easy to integrate because they're already polyphonic and you can just use uh, the old school uh, pre-recorded swings if you have one of those so let me switch to smooth Jedi I'm going to switch to a font that uh, does not have any dynamic swing sounds. Smooth fuzz. Five oh one commit. So this is a stock NEC font. Uh, let's see how this sounds. See, just pre-recorded sounds. Nothing. Uh, no dynamic sounds. And this uses the uh, uses the same uh, swing tolerance as the blaster blocks, uh, the one button blaster box. So there's no extra setting for it. But it's pretty responsive, as you can see. They're pretty accurate.
All right, so that's it. Hopefully you enjoy taking a look. I'd like to give a shout out to Andres Kuhn, uh, Jason J.B. Kuma, and uh, a third developer who wishes to remain anonymous. Uh, I could not have done this alone. Uh, this was uh, quite an undertaking. Um, we had to develop our, our own sound engine from the ground up uh, and then make our own polyphonic sound engine from the ground up. So that was uh, I'd never done anything quite like that before. It was uh, quite a learning experience. So that's all I've got for you for today. And as always, thanks for watching.